Oh, yes, you sure can. I can, I can try and use it as a pointer at least.
So that is why we, we like to look at it in a more constrained setting, essentially, and see if the astronomical methods are working. So essentially, there you go. Um, we recently got a paper group publication on various transitions of lead, which is very nice, and now we're moving on to tin. So I will be helping with that. The electron configuration should be similar. Um, another thing that I will be doing is using the GRASP2K software to um, simulate, do transition simulations um, to find ex theoretical values for the transition probabilities to compare with the experimental depth that we get. And that's essentially it. Questions for Kendra? All right. Yeah, velocity after the foil. I know we just started talking about that. Yes. Uh, how do we uh, get that number, do you think? Okay. So we use, um, obviously, the. it isn't exactly the same as the velocity before the foil because there is a collision, but we do have a program that can approximate it based on what it was before we saw it. Have you started collecting the data yet for this yes. chain transitions? Yes, we've started. We're still trying to find a good precursor. Um, what we've been working <coughs> with so far is um, like just tin metal, but the problem with that is we have to heat it up in order to um, allow the plasma to ionize it, essentially. And the problem is that in order to get a good beam, we have to heat it so high that the tin will actually melt and gum up our instruments. So we have recently got in some tin chloride, and we're going to try using that instead. And we should be running that sometime this week, so here's hoping that that looks better. Okay. And we do have some preliminary data with tin from the metal that we got before it started gumming up the machinery. All right. Well, let's thank Kendra again. Yeah.